Afenyo Markin, the majority leader, uh, recently, you know, flashed the religious card, talking about Haruna Idrisu, the former minority leader in parliament, citing that, oh, the NDC is against Muslims, maybe people of northern extraction. Uh, we ask, what role does the religious card play in this election? But before we do so, let's listen to Afenyo Markin. It was a nostalgic moment for me, as I observed Dr. Muhammadu Baumia make history as he filed his nomination at the Electoral Commission. For the first time since 1957, when this country attained independence, it has taken the MPP as the first party ever to give a Muslim an opportunity to be a flag bearer in the politics of the country. We have given true meaning to our vision as a party for our country. That in our party is a party of inclusiveness and diversity. In the past, many were those who doubted the true colors of our party. But today, that question has been answered. That even in the NDC, the only gentleman who was the hope of the Muslims in the politics of the country was kicked out. I refer to Harun Idrisu. In the NDC party today, there is no prominent Muslim leading the charge in the politics of their party. We have demonstrated that in MPP, it doesn't matter your religion. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter which village you come from. We believe in competence. We believe that you can rise to eminence by merit. So let me come to you, Musa Dankwa. Does it matter or just more politics? Your take. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm somebody who grew up in Zongo, lived my entire life in Zongo, and I'm from Achim Abuakwa. So I understand the Muslim uh, dynamics when it comes to Zongo issues. NDC has won the Muslim vote, not because they present Muslim candidates. It's because the Muslim traditionally allied to the NDC for some historical antecedents. And this goes back to 1969 Aliens Compliance Order that uh, Buzia implemented uh, and drove many uh, of those people out of the country. And they happen to be Muslims. That's why we have this kind of history between NDC and, and, and the Muslims. And indeed, if you look at the polls we have done, in, fact, in November, we did a poll of the Zongo communities consequences or consider has zone communities to assess who they intend to vote for. In that poll, among Muslims, Mama was on 76%, Baumia 20%. You say in that poll, as far as Muslims were concerned, the former president Mahama had what? 76%. 76%. Yes. And Dr. Baumia had how much? On 20%. 20%. Muslims in, yes, 20%. In Muslim communities. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And, and that then, is part of you why you dream, think this whole bit about which party is fielding a Muslim doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And if you look at the July poll, the most recent poll in July, you have Muhammad on 56% among Muslims and Baumia 36% among Muslims. And indeed, in, 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 in this morning poll that we just released, you see that the same story is being repeated. So the Muslim issue, as far as NBC and Ghana are concerned, I think is non-starter. You even think it's non-starter? Did you just say that? Yes. It, it, <laughs> even though it's a small proportion of people who are NDC voters, mm. who are now voting for Baumia because it's a Muslim. But that number is very, very small. Mm. Right. It's, it's interesting, sweetie, because Really, when I, when I look at a politician, and we've had Muslim vice presidents, by the way, yeah. but, and we've had contenders for the running mates yeah. on different sides who have been Muslim. But I asked myself, when I heard this, I was asking, scratching my head a bit, um, 
doesn't matter. I, I don't care. I'm looking at competence yeah. and whether the person can do the job or gives me a semblance of whether the person is Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, or this or that. Doesn't really matter to me. I don't know about you. But Afanyo Makin himself said that it doesn't matter. But I mean, if you look at the politics of it, I think this is a master class of campaign speeches to appeal to a particular group, the Muslims, and make them feel included. Meanwhile, saying that it doesn't matter. But I want to find out from um, Dr. S Dr. John Osai Kopon, what does this really change, if at all? Does it change anything in tipping the skills, in winning votes, in this um, coming December elections? Does it matter? I, I don't believe it matters. I mean, I can understand why he was trying to tout the diversity credentials mm. of the NPP, right? But for me, he could have left it at that instead of wading into, you know, and this is what the NDC did and et cetera, et cetera. And as, you know, Mr. Musa Danka said, if you look at the global infoanalytics poll um, on the question of which of these issues are, or things are likely to influence your vote, um, for over a year between their July 2023 poll and their July 2024 poll, only about 1% say that, you know, uh, the, the issue of religion uh, matters. Mm. The economy, jobs continue to dominate in their polls. Uh, if you look at Prof. Smart Sapong's poll, it was the economy and jobs. If you look at Afrobarometer, it's the economy and jobs. So, yes... I'm sure that there are individuals who some of these affinity characteristics may draw them to, to a candidate. But ultimately, what people are looking for are the key issues that are being captured in, for example, the Global Info Analytics Poll. And consistently, jobs and the economy uh, is what is on the minds um, of voters. So as to whether you come from a particular religion or a particular part of the country, Bottom line is voters want, you know, a good economy, voters want jobs, and therefore really don't care much uh, for, for, for this. Um, I mean, whatever his intention is, whether it's to create some dissat dissatisfaction within the Muslim community for the NDC, um, that, that is up to him. But for me, it, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's a very irrelevant political campaign issue. Irrelevant. We cannot, under, we cannot underestimate the influence of the Muslim fact. I think that it's, it's, it may not change much, but it's important. A lot of people who don't watch political shows like this and understand the, or the analysis of the issues that other voters are looking forward to or will be voting on, there are people who just vote because they want to see a Muslim president. How does that play right. into... Mm. So the, the irrelevance I'm referring to is that in the grand scheme of things, mm. right, um, there are more important issues uh, to the voter beyond a candidate's religion or beyond a candidate's uh, other kinds of demographic characteristics. Mm. Now, you're correct. There are some people who would, you know, would vote or will be motivated, you mm -hmm. know, by 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 things like that mm. but i'm saying that those who are motivated by that yeah. are very small okay. very very small that in the grand scheme of things mm. it's the big ticket items that really matter to voters like jobs and the economy okay let me bring in professor kobe mensa i have two straight questions for you one if we want to play the religious card then we should also be looking at the population of muslims vis-a-vis Christians, right? Christians constitute or account for about 71% of the population, at least from 2022 data. And then you have about 20% Muslim, right? Of course, the voting, uh, you know, um, communities will be slightly different in terms of the permutations. Is that a safe place to go when it comes to voting? Is it, is it even strategic to want to play this card? That is a very dangerous path, you know, to, to thread. I mean, given the history of the political parties. And you see, don't forget, when it comes to ideological leaning, now, in countries where there are huge Muslim populations, that is, you know, uh, they're over in, you know, that of Christians, you're most likely to have those, you know, uh, citizens aligning to maybe the right, for example. Uh, in most cases, the minorities in countries tend to be less leaning 
because of their special situation. You know, sometimes they feel discriminated against. Sometimes they feel that opportunities aren't there for them. So they become more progressive than, you know, conservative. All right. And so the permutation of where you know, certain groups of people would lean is multifaceted. You have to consider traditional issues. You have to consider the, you know, the conventional issues. You have to consider other, you know, social, cultural groupings in order to think that, you know, a certain group of people lean towards left or right. So the idea that you're going to cast a, a certain religious layer in order that people will shift towards the MPP, it's unimaginable. And by the way, when it comes to that conversation, your party stands to lose, like uh, uh, Musa Danko actually said. You know, because when you read the lit literature and when you look at the history of this country, majority of times the Muslims are actually leaning to the right and uh, to the left. Now, those who are actually gradually leaning to the right, that is to, towards the NPC, is because of opportunity. When you look at the North, because the proponents of them were actually to the, to the left, when it came to positioning, people were left out. And they realized that, wow, there was opportunity or the opportunity in the NPC. Why don't you take that opportunity? And that's why you see a lot of them, you know, swearing towards the right now, not because traditionally they are aligned to the, to the right, all right? And so you have to look at the dynamic of why certain groups of people would lean towards a certain political party in order to pick that particular fight. I don't think that what he said was relevant and okay. was needed, especially in a situation where you have the economic issues being predominant. Even if you had you know, a certain you know, fertile economic situation, you probably would want to lure into such areas. Okay. But not when what matters in people's lives so far is very deteriorating. And then, of course, you're picking a fight that is unnecessary. All right. Uh, Prof, let, let me, I'll come right back to you, but let me also usher into the conversation Mustafa Gbande, he's Deputy General Secretary of the NDC. Mustafa, good morning. It's, it's good to have you. Sweetie, I you will come to you shortly. But, Prof, just briefly on, on this point, because Dr. John Osai Kwapong said it was irrelevant, you have just said you don't think it's relevant, basically meaning both of you think it's irrelevant on some score. But will this political strategy resonate with the grassroots? Because it may not be for people like me. That doesn't change anything. But how about the base of these parties, the grassroots? Will it resonate with them? Briefly on that, Prof. When they feel existential threat of not having their own person at the top there, it could be relevant. But when the existential threat is actually about delivery, about performance, about job, and about economic issues, I don't see how that really will play big time in their consideration, all right? Of course, there are people who want to see their own identities in positions hoping that that would actually bring them the goodies. But that's a different kind of you know, political messaging. It is not about the, 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 the Christianity or the Muslimness of that person. You want to tie into your person is there as a result. You're going to get a job or you're going to get a, a, a certain economic issues resolved. But not a bare fact you know, idea that this is a Muslim, especially right. when they haven't actually seen that reflect even in their current I don't think that really works. Right. right. Let's bring in Mustafa Gbande. Mustafa, so how do you respond to accusations of religious bias following the removal of Harun Idrisu, as said by the majority speaker, as against them presenting a Muslim flag bearer in the upcoming December polls? What's your response to that? <coughs> First of all, good morning to our other panelists on the other line. At my initial reaction today is that the comment is below the belt. Two, it's very dangerous if we begin to deliberately and intentionally draw in religion, ethnicity, basically into our political domain. Ghana has a history of a fused, tolerant, you know, religious establishment. And so if we begin to do this, then we'll be dividing homes, dividing
dividing families and setting this country up for major, major conflict. If you look at, in terms of security, what has happened in other nations, I think that what the Honorable Majority Leader have said is not just condemnable, it is also dangerous. Uh, it sets the nation on a pedestrian of religious, you know, rivalry. But let me also say that in the NDC, we will not base our campaign, our political organization, our mobilization, our intention or vision to manage this country along the lines of religion. The NDC is on record to have always looked at building a nation, lifting up the vulnerable, and bridging the social gaps. Right. Musafa. Honorable Harun and Drusu mm. was in Tamale over the weekend. I was there myself. The running mate was there, and some functionaries were also there to launch his campaign. He's one of the pillars of our northern politics. He's grown over time, you know, rise to various leadership positions. He didn't get there because he was a Muslim or a Christian. Honorable Mutaka was in Tamale over the weekend. Um, you know, we joined him to do a lot of activity. He did not get to where he was, even being appointed as a sports minister because he was a Muslim or a Christian. It was basically on issues of competence and a decision of leadership. Okay. Not all times, leaders will come, leaders will go. So the attempt to seek to throw in religious division by opinion markings into the NDC is not just demonic, but it is also trivialized along what we call uh, politicians who make loose talks. The MPP is in power. They should lift society they should develop society. They should build a nation and stop finding excuses for their laziness, their incompetence, and their ignorance. We should not allow the MPP to set this nation up. We should not allow so any politician. Ghana, Ghana is a cosmopolitan country, right? And so we have different <clears throat> mixture of cultures, religion, ethnicity, and the rest. And the season is ripe for politicians to punch loopholes in their um, opponent's strategies, campaign messages, and so on and so forth. So if they've identified a gap in your strategy, your message, or in fact your team for the December um, 7th elections, is it, is it not theirs to use? If they've, they've found this religious card, is it not within their rights to use it as a campaign, well, campaign um, tool? So well, as a student of security, I think that those are dangerous terrains for us to allow our political discourse to veer into. I've always stated that the NDC is very careful not to spark the tone of ethnic and religious politics. We are aware that Dr. Mahmoud Baumi and the MPP is doing all the many things, including trying to bribe pastors and all of that. But we are not concerned because um, if you raise a political card, it doesn't put food on the table when you discuss religion. <laughs> I mean, there's no... The NDC basically is one that cut across. And we are okay to position ourselves in that manner. We will not join the MPP in their recklessness and their desperation to break an eight, they call it, at the back of corruption, fraud, and incompetence, to try and plunge this nation into chaos. And I urge all other uh, uh, commentators to condemn the MPP because these are dangerous terrain. Those who have read political science, history, and security will tell you that when a nation begins to put clear religious an ethnic line sooner or later that nation will go into war so just and that to be the NDC clear mm, will not do that line the ndc will not be playing any political religious or ethnic cards in the build-up to the december 7th elections we have never done so 
and we will never do that. Right. We have allowed people to join the NDC on the basis of belief in ideology, mm. partnering to develop a nation. People will look at our track record, our performance, and will join and vote for the political party. The objects of governance is to put food on the table of Ghanaians, mm. defending Ghanaians, take stress out of Ghanaians, champion policies that will build an all-inclusive society. Right. And so the NDC will stay and will try to stay on that foot. I mean, His Excellency John Damani Mahama, the leader of our party, he was raised from both a home of Muslim and Christianity. I have been a Muslim, a, a Muslim for over 35 years. I'm a Christian. My traditional family are, uh, are not Christians or Muslims. They are raw, traditional people. Mm -hmm. And so would you want to go and stand somewhere to want to skew and to want to position a political party along, you know, religious lines? It is right. dangerous. It's fundamentally condemnable. It, is, it shouldn't be coming from a majority leader. I mean, MPP should be very careful with their utterances these days because they are closer to doing things that will divide our nation. They have caused the nation too much pain. They've hurt the corridors and the fiber of this nation so much that they should not be allowed to proceed on this path any further. We should have a political activity. We should have conversations that build our society, a conversation that reassures hope for our society, a conversation that gives hope to the next generation, okay. a conversation that ensures that Ghana is a cosmopolitan, a religious, tolerant nation as we have always been. Right, Mustafa. This breed of national officers and appointees President Akufado have brought to this nation are not just dangerous, but they are a threat to our national security. And they must be viewed as that. Right. markings must be condemned. They must be called to apologize and retract this reckless statement he has made. All right. Uh, Mustafa, thank you for those comments. It's also good to hear that you talk about the fact that the NDC will not be going down that uh, same road. But let's...